Hello, everyone. Today is October 15, 2023. We have a Israeli-Palestinian federal government simulation with Dr. Einat Welf. Um, this is a very unique time because this is the first time that we have a simulation while a war is going on in Israel, Palestine, we have two governments there that have not been able to give peace to the people of Israel and Palestine for a long time, over 75 years. And they are really proving at this time why a common federal government is necessary and has the potential to make peace. We have a formula for a common federal government. You can read the formula at ipconfederation.org and you can read the constitution. We do not support the dismantling of the Israeli government or the Palestinian government. We believe in the creation of a separate and independent democratic federal government for the people of Israel and Palestine from the river to the sea, based on a constitution, based on equality and democracy that would finally be able to give peace to the people of Israel and Palestine. Today, we have Dr. Einat Welf as a speaker during the simulation. Dr. Einat Welf is a prominent expert on Israel, Zionism, foreign policy, and education. She served as a member of the Israeli Knesset from the years 2010 to the years 2013, where she held the position of chair of the Education Committee and was a member of the Influential Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee. Dr. Wilf was born and raised in Israel. She served as an intelligence officer in the Israeli Defense Forces and worked as a, worked as a foreign policy advisor to Vice Prime Minister Shimon Peres and as a strategic consultant with McKinsey and Company. Dr. Wilf holds a bachelor's degree from Harvard, an MBA from INSED in France, and a PhD in political science from the University of Cambridge. She has been a visiting professor at Georgetown University and currently worked as a lecturer at Reichman University in Israel. Dr. Wolf has authored seven books that delve into important topics in Israeli society, including We Should All Be Zionist. She has also co-authored a book with Adi Schwartz titled The War of Return, How Western Indulgence of the Palestinian Dream Has obscured the path to peace. I guess because of the circumstances, I was not able to meet in person with Dr. Wolf on Zoom, but I did send her a copy of our PowerPoint presentation, which is um, not as explanatory as meeting in person, but hopefully uh, when we do the simulation, she'll be able to um, respond adequately. That's our purpose, is to have our guests being able to respond adequately to what is being proposed here. Um, on October 23rd, I will be making a uh, simulation, a in-person simulation at Claremont College for the students of Professor Mark Jurgensmeyer. This is the fourth time that I was invited to make that uh, simulation in person but with, uh, with the students of Dr. Jurgensmeyer. He also participated in our simulation and he's a strong supporter of our formula for peace. 
On October 29, we will have a meeting with, with me regarding my trip to Israel and regarding the uh, essence of the IPC, where it where are we going from here? On, on November 1st, we will have a billboard um, in Tel Aviv, a Jewish state is bad for Jews. And we will be able to discuss that billboard um, on October 29 as well. On November 12th, we will have Anna Kalinska uh, from uh, Estonia telling us about how a election could be held <laughs> online in, as it is taking place in Estonia. On uh, November 12th, we will have Susan Molnar from uh, Beirut and beyond. On um, November 26th, we will have Mitchell Plitnik, who is the president of Rethink Foreign Policy, and he's the co-author of the book, Except for Palestine. On uh, December 10th, we will have uh, Rebecca Ruth Gold uh, as a guest. Uh, she's a doctor as well. And on December 17, we will have three proposed um, two-state solutions. Um, each person, so it's going to be Mona Ali Khalil, she's an attorney. Um, I believe she's with the UN. Nasir Abushi, who is, uh, comes to our simulations on a regular basis and Dr. Alon Burstein, they will each present a two-state solution formula, and we will vote on those solutions as we, um, as we are, as they explain them to us. Uh, we had many, many participants in our simulations. Um, Noam Chomsky appeared twice in our simulation, and he endorsed the IPC peace plan and recorded a video to that effect. Uh, but many others uh, support our formula for peace. Uh, unfortunately, some people have not either responded to us or ignored us or refused to come in to talk about the formula for peace. And I'm very appreciative of Dr. Anat Wilf for uh, um, taking the time to respond to our formula for peace. We usually take about 120 minutes. We show several segments and we will ask Dr. Wilf to respond to each segment. And then we will, uh, with, and within the 120 minutes, in other words, after about an hour and 10 minutes, we will have a conversation with Dr. Wilf with question and answers by the uh, audience to Dr. Wolf as well. We have a video that explains our formula for peace and I would like to play it for the audience. The conflict between Israelis and Palestinians has endured for generations. And instead of time healing the wounds, it's only caused the anger to fester and the violence to grow. But what if there was a way to alleviate the tension? Something that may not outright solve every problem, but at least create a forum that encourages a peaceful compromise. Welcome to the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation, a common third government between the Israeli and Palestinian citizens, specifically designed to foster peace, tolerance, and economic prosperity between the two nations. Here's how it works. First off, both Israel and Palestine will keep their respective governments. Israelis Knesset and the Palestinian National Authority will remain unchanged. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation, IPC, will be a third entity acting as a unifying agent between the two. The IPC will comprise 300 parliament members elected from 300 districts in Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. Above them will preside a president and vice president, one Israeli and one Palestinian. 
In order for the IPC to pass a law, it will require a 55% majority from its Israeli representatives, as well as a 55% majority from its Palestinian representatives, thereby preventing either side from monopolizing the legislature. Of course, the IPC won't undermine the political power of either the Israeli or the Palestinian government. At any time, Israel or Palestine may veto a law passed by the IPC. If neither side vetoes, the law is passed. And the two nations are another step closer to resolution. Please help us make this a reality. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation. We might speak different languages, but we all mean the same thing. So we're going to be simulating what was in that video. Um, we usually take a pre-simulation survey. I would ask all of you at this time to vote. Do you support a common federal government for the people of Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, and Israel in order to uh, make peace? Please vote. Um, either yes or no. This is for the entire audience. Okay, I'll give it um, one more minute. Okay. Um, can you publish the vote, please? Okay, so 30 out of 36 voted yes, which is 83%. And six out of 36 voted no, which is 17%. This is the pre-simulation. Uh, stop sharing. I just wanted to let those of you that did not participate in previous simulation know that many that are here already participated in previous simulations. And this is why we see such a high yes number because they went through the simulations and understand how this common government will work and how it will make peace. We do not anticipate that this would be the real number if a, 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 a um, survey by, uh, of the Israeli or the Palestinian pe uh, population will take place uh, right now. Okay. Um, the simulation, Objective is to show how a common government, a common federal government will make peace. Um, this is not about creating an Israeli or Palestinian government. It's a creating a Israeli-Palestinian government, a common government. Dr. Wolf is not a spokesperson for the IPC. She was invited to stress test the formula that we are provide, uh, presenting. We are pro-peace, we follow our own initiative, and we anticipate that when a common federal government is created, it will follow its own, its own initiative. It's not going to follow the Israeli uh, uh, narrative or the Palestinian narrative, it will have its own narrative. We expect to have a rigorous discussion with uh, Dr. Wolf, but it will be a respectable, a respectful. We will respect each other in the discussion. We do not preclude other formulas for peace, and we are not claiming exclusivity. In fact, we invite other formulas to present uh, to us as well. We will ask Dr. Wolf, is our formula, could it make peace? Is it attainable? But we will ask Dr. Wolf to be um, fair, not to judge us based on perfection, uh, because it's never possible to reach perfection. But we will ask Dr. Wolf to judge us based on, to judge the plan itself based on what's the alternative, not what's perfect. Um, we will show, uh, I believe, three legislations today. But we have many, many legislations that we can show that would be acceptable to both the Palestinian and the Israeli uh, governments. We are asking you to look at the big pictures, avoid technical arguments. We also ask to refrain from comments, but you can ask questions. 
with the exception of Dr. Wolf. Dr. Wolf obviously is uh, encouraged to make her comments and to um, ask questions. But I ask the audience, please restrict yourself to questions. This is not a lecture. This is a simulation, which is a, a, we are mimicking the operation of an existing or proposed system. If I show you an airplane and you say, Joseph, this, I never, I will never board an airplane because they are unsafe and they cause pollution, that's a comment. But if you ask me, Joseph, how would this plane, how does it fly? That's a question. We encourage questions, not comments. You can put your comments in the chat or wait until we have the uh, question and answer session with Dr. Wolf, and you can make your comments, whatever you want, about the formula or other issues. Obviously, there are very burning issues right now, and I'm not ignoring it in, in, in Israel, Palestine, but especially between Israel and Gaza. In order to have this simulation go well, we need to make assumptions. The first assumptions is that we just concluded, meaning today, concluded an election of 14 million people. That means the people in Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, and Jerusalem. From the river to the sea, 14 million people were permitted to vote. Of course, with the exception of minors. We will also have to assume that 5 million people voted. We will have to assume that 3 million Palestinians voted and 2 million Israeli voters means that the 5 million people voted and participated in an election for a federal government for the whole area. We will also have to assume that 1.5 million people voted for president and 1.3 million voted for, for vice president. We will have to assume for the purpose of the simulation because it makes it easier for me. I don't intend ever to run for president we will have to assume that I was elected president by one and a half million votes and a Palestinian lady was elected by 1.3 million votes and we will rotate. I will become vice president in two years and she will become president in two years. We will also have to assume that 300 parliament mem members were elected, all representing districts in Israel, Palestine, in, in Gaza, the West Bank, and Jerusalem and Israel. Each parliament members represent 47,000 people. This is my first uh, uh, question to Dr. Wolf. Dr. Wolf, do you have any questions or comments regarding these assumptions? You're seriously asking? Yeah, I'm asking you, do you have any questions or comments regarding these assumptions? Of course. Okay. Any, any idea that Jews and Arabs between the river and the sea can live together will first require the complete acceptance by the Arabs between the river and the sea that the Jewish people as a people have the equal right to self-determination in this land. Prior to that, there can be no elections, there can be no confederation. When you had all these beautiful ideas, such as in Europe, Germany became part of the EU only after Germany was utterly and completely defeated, signed an unconditional surrender, and was occupied for 45 years in order to become the peaceful pillar of a common market that it is today. Japan, before it could become a peaceful nation, signed an unconditional surrender and went on, as the name of the book about it was, to embrace defeat. As long as the majority of the Arabs, the Palestinians in the land, do not vocally, clearly embrace the equal right of the Jewish people to self-determination in this land, none of your assumptions make any sense at all, and they are completely ridiculous, if not utterly offensive. 
All right, what specific part of the assumptions, these are all technical issues. In other words, the elections could take place online and we could offer the people of Israel and Palestine to vote online. So what part of these uh, assumptions are, in your opinion, not attainable? There will not be elections before the Palestinians embrace the fact that given that their goal for the last century was to prevent and later destroy the Jewish right to self-determination in any part of the land, until they embrace, as the Japanese did, that given that this was their goal, they have been defeated until they embrace that there is no such thing as a right of return into the sovereign state of Israel, until they embrace that the Jewish people have the equal right to self-determination in the land, until they embrace those things, there will not be elections, period. How, so would, that, the how would the election be prevented? There will not be elections. Well, what if what if we are able to conduct the election, regardless of whether the conditions that you are uh, proposing are met or not? There because, is no such because thing. this you is conduct, the election for the people of election. Israel and Palestine, regardless of the conditions. These elections you cannot conduct elections in an entity that does not exist. And for the entity to exist, these are the conditions that could be met. So okay. there cannot be elections. Why not? Why can't we have a, a election online and offer the 14 million people the because opportunity Because those are not vote? elections. You want to have a poll. You want to have a Twitter poll. Fine. But those are not elections. Okay, elections so if we, are have, if we have parliament members proposing to run... And if we have a president and vice president proposing to run, and we have a, a, a elections taking place online and they last three months, you are saying that these are not legitimate elections? They're not even elections, period. Why are I mean, they not, not elections? elections? Why are they not elections? Because people... elections are created in political bodies. Elections are not Twitter polls. You are deceiving people by even claiming that it's possible and creating bizarre ideas. Elections happen in political entities. Twitter polls, you're welcome to do. Online surveys, be my guest. Elections that have consequences happen in political entities agreed by the people who live on those political entities. Well, for the purpose so those are not of, elections, period. For the purpose of this discussion today, are you willing to accept those assumptions? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, all right. Does anyone have a question in the audience regarding those questions, not comments, questions regarding the assumptions? I have a question. Okay, what's your question? I'm sorry. Uh, I have. A, um, I think it is very inaccurate to say that um, that is that uh, they don't recognize or they don't uh, recognize our right to exist and all of it. It, it is all not true because uh, based on on the history, I'm. I'm well, what is your that, question? Uh, what is your question? My, my question is is how how dare you deny the history, the the facts on the ground? That's my question. And when you say you, who do you mean? I mean, Dr. Enat, uh, whatever, yeah, with Dr. Will. Dr. Yeah, that, 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 that's simply, that's simply a lie. That's it. That's what okay. I'm saying. Okay. All right. That's not a question. I have, Does I have a question. Does anyone have, have a... any questions regarding yes, I, the I have assumptions? A I have a question. Regarding the assumptions, please. Reg reg I put aside the semantics of election or public opinion poll. 14 million people, of which there are 11 million Israelis. So are okay. you telling us that 75% of the Palestinians will vote, but only 20% of the Israelis? What is your question, sir? 
It, I just asked it. What's your question? You are making an assumption that of the 14 million people that have the right to vote, 75% of the Palestinians will vote, but only 20% of the Israelis? Uh, no, that's not in the assumption. Read the assumption. Yes, 5 14 million, 5 million people million. are allowed to vote. 5 million people voted. 2 million Palestinian voted. And two, uh, 3 million Palestinian voted. And 2 million Israelis voted. That's, what I'm exactly, that's exactly what I'm asking you. That's exactly three million the, Palestinians out of three million Palestinians. No, I didn't say three million out of three million. I said three million Palestinians and two million Israelis. Voting. Are there any other questions? Any other questions? Joseph, uh, stop cutting me <laughs> off, and don't do it to the Dr. Wolf tone. Let her speak. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, I have a question. <laughs> I have a question. Hello. Yes, sir, what is sir, your question? Uh, sir, uh, sir. Yeah, my question is about this self-determination of people, uh, both the Israelis and Palestinians. Do you have a question regarding yeah, the yeah. assumption? The assumption. We need to move on. It's not a discussion about Israel-Palestine. Yeah, okay, okay I'll withdraw. I'll withdraw. Okay. Um, so the speaker is not willing to accept the assumptions. Um, and I believe that those assumptions are attainable. Um, one day of full-fledged war is between Gaza and Israel is a hundred million dollars, uh, more than that. And with a hundred million dollar investment, those assumptions could become a reality. Um, we are a, uh, we are uh, conducting a simulations. And we are asking you, the audience, at this time to act as either Israeli or Palestinian parliament members in the simulation, okay? Um, we're not going to be asking uh, the legislation that we're presenting today. Do not ask the Israeli or the Palestinian uh, government to veto. Therefore, uh, we're not asking for a... A, a, any any person to uh, volunteer to be Israeli or Palestinian um, um, leader. At this time, I'm asking you, the audience, to act as either Israeli or Palestinian parliament member. Wait, before you show the, let me show you a map and you decide what area you represent in Israel, Palestine. So let's, we need to be, um, to try to be as honest as possible and remain either Palestinian or Israeli um, parliament members. So now that you see the map, please um, let's have the those audience member that are willing to be Palestinian parliament members, please vote yes. So could you, Dan, can you show the, um, um, the poll, Palestinian parliament members. I want to see how many Palestinian parliament members do we have? Okay, give it a little bit more time. This is not a question of yes or no. This is a question of how many we have. We just want to have a survey of how many we have. This give it a little bit more question. time. Okay, we have uh, 12 Palestinian parliament members. Uh, uh, show the results, 12 Palestinian parliament members. And let's go to Israeli parliament members. How many we have Israelis? Okay, published. We have 15 Israeli parliament members. So remember what district you represent because I may ask you during the simulation, what district do you represent and whether you're Israeli or Palestinian, okay? So this is part of the simulation. I would like to respond to Dr. Wilf. Um, I'm not sure what she said that the election is not you, not calling it an election. Um, 
I just want to remind you that neither the Israeli nor the Palestinian governments have true election in the whole area. And we are proposing to create a common government for the whole area of Israel, the West Bank and Gaza. And the fact that it is the elections is taking place for the entire area does not make it uh, not an election. It's and the fact that it's online, it does not make it not an election. So um, she didn't say that Israel will object to it or the Palestinians will object to it. So therefore, I believe that that's not, I'm not going to respond to that. Uh, uh, so the first, so now that we have a president, vice president in the simulation and we have a parliament, we need to pass, uh, we need to ratify the constitution. and. Uh, Libby, would you be so kind as to read out the Constitution? This is a short version of the Constitution, but uh, please, please, Libby, please read it. We believe that Palestinians and Israelis are entitled to equal rights under the law and guaranteed human rights and freedom. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation does not intend to supersede or supplant the Palestinian or Israeli governments nor to abrogate or undermine any agreements between those governments. We recognize the need to work with the Israeli and Palestinian governments. Our purpose is to resolve conflicts and to expand the relationship between Palestinians and Israelis in a fair and equitable manner. We believe in equal rights under the law, guaranteed human rights and freedom for all. We voluntarily give the legislatures and the governments of Israel and Palestine veto power over legislation we pass relating to the domain of control of those governments. We believe in the separation of power between the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. We believe in the creation of a permanent secular government for all the people residing in Israel and Palestine. We believe in having a separate judicial branch relating to IPC legislation with Israeli and Palestinian judges with a system to avoid biased decisions based on nationality. All right. So basically, the Constitution, in essence, says that the Israeli and the Palestinian government could agree to whatever they want. They could agree to two states. They could agree to one state or any other system. Constitutionally, we are prohibited from undermining any agreements between those governments. We also, in the Constitution, state that if the laws that we pass are contradicting or undermining the, the sovereignty of either the Israeli or the Palestinian government, we give them a veto power over those legislation. And if they do fail to veto the legislation, then it becomes the law. So, Dr. Wilf, um, can I have your comments regarding the Constitution? Yes, I continue to argue that it's completely irrelevant. I understand that you will ignore me once more. If you said you really want to stress test your ideas, rather than use them as pie in the sky opportunities, mostly to undermine Israel, then you're not really stress testing them. You're just living in your own little world. Constitutions, there's a fetish around constitutions, but again, the constitution of Japan, of post-imperial Japan was written after unconditional surrender by General MacArthur and sat there for years to ensure that the entire Japanese culture moved away from militarism and suicide missions into the country that it is today. The constitution writing of Germany was done after unconditional surrender, complete defeat and occupation of Germany. So the notion that you can just write constitutions and they will magically become the reality if you're serious about stress testing your things, then start to look at reality. Whenever people were willing, were able to move beyond conflict, it was first when there was clear victory and the side 
that was defeated embraced defeat to move on to create prosperous life. The Palestinians have never, never recognized the equal right of the Jewish people as a people to self-determination in this land. And I'm being specific because a lot of people do not listen to what are the words. They have never recognized the equal right of the Jewish people as a people to self-determination in any part of the land. This has been the cause of the conflict for the last century. Only after the Palestinians finally move away from their destructive cause, from their singular focus. This is what they've mobilized their, all their resources for the last century. And this is why they failed because for a century they've mobilized all the resources to ensure that the Jewish people do not have a state and that the state could not be undone. This is what is at the core of the Palestinian support for the massacres and the atrocities committed by Hamas. Hamas reflects the idea that the Jews have no right to self-determination in the land. And you cannot just gloss it over by writing a fairy tale constitution. The constitutions of Japan and Germany were written by occupying forces after those nations unconditionally surrendered and accepted defeat. Now you're welcome to ignore me once more as you did before, but if you're stress uh, uh, testing Dr. your Dr. Wilk, do you have any comments regarding the, the language, the text that is in the constitution in front of you? Do you have any comments? Utterly, utterly irrelevant without the complete unconditional surrender and embrace of defeat by Palestinians that the Jewish people have a right to self-determination and that their cause should move from a destructive one to a constructive one. The constitution, the language, every single <laughs> word, utterly irrelevant without that context. All right, uh, any other comments regarding the constitution? Any other questions, not comments, questions, please. Do you have any questions regarding the constitution? Charles has his hand up. Okay, do you have any question? Please ask the question. I was wondering if on the last clause, um, a system to avoid bias decisions based on nationality, since the nationality is contested or you know, not defined in some cases, would it be better to say national identity? Okay, any other questions? All right, uh, let's have a vote, Palestinian parliament members. Now, before we take the vote, because we are a, you are a parliament member, in order to be part of the parliament, you must accept the constitution. There is no choice for not accepting the constitution. If you do not accept the constitution, you will be expelled from the parliament. Still are a citizen of Israel or Palestine, but you are expelled. Palestinian parliament members, please vote. Do you support the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation Constitution? Palestinian parliament members. Okay. And, uh, okay, and the polling. 16 out of 16, so we have more Palestinian parliament members, uh, voted in favor of the constitution, ratify the constitution. Let's have the Israeli parliament members. Israeli parliament members, please vote. Okay, uh, publish the vote. Uh, 14 out of 15 Israeli parliament members voted. Um, one voted no, so that person, uh, could you please identify yourself who you are, the, the Israeli person who voted no, because you're going to be expelled from the, from the parliament and you will not be able to vote on the upcoming legislation. So we don't have a, um, a person does not want to recognize to, uh, to um, 
tell us who he is or she is. That's fine. Let's go to the uh, Sherry Oz. It's Sherry Oz. She identified herself in the chat. Oh, she did. Okay. Okay. So you are Sherry. You are not permitted to vote on the legislation because you are expelled from the parliament. All right. Um, our first order of business is granting a veto power to the separate governments. Now we are a parliament, we ratify the constitution. Uh, could you, um, uh, Charles, could you please read that uh, uh, legislation? <clears throat> granting a veto power to the separate governments. The Confederation is the government of the entire population of Israel and Palestine from the river to the sea. We recognize the Palestinian and Israeli governments and are seeking their cooperation to implement our vision for peace by giving them a veto. We will do our utmost to satisfy the essential needs of each government. We are pleading with the Palestinian and Israeli public to understand that while we would like to pass the best legislation possible to improve their lives, under these constraints, a perfect legislation is not possible. We hereby bestow a veto power relating to legislation affecting the sovereignty to the following, the government of Israel on issues in which it is indispensable, the Palestinian government on which it is indispensable, in the event of changes in governments, the legislation may be amended or repealed. The parliament will decide on indispensability. Vetoes may be bestowed individually or collectively. Dr. Welf, do you have any comments or question regarding this legislation that we are about to pass? Oh no, it's absolutely lovely that you create a fairy tale idea and then you bestow uh, a sovereign government's right to veto the fairy tale idea. Again, none of this makes any sense. It's all lovely fairy tales. There is a sovereign state of Israel. The Palestinians will have their sovereign state the day that they decide that they want a state more than they want the Jews not to have a state. Other than that, everything else is irrelevant. Do you see this common government as a threat to the Israeli or the Jewish state? And if so, how? There will not be a common government. So I, I can't even begin to discuss. It's like you're asking me, do you believe this fairy tale or this deadly dragon is a threat. You're living in a parallel universe that does not exist. And from within that parallel universe, you're trying to ask questions about reality. The Jewish people have their sovereign state. The threat that has always been has been from people who believe that the Jews have no such right and who have taken violence in order to try to prevent Jews from having that right. That's the only threat to Jewish self-determination. And the Palestinians will have their self-determination today the that they finally embrace that the Jewish people will also have their state next to them. When that day comes, when the Palestinians finally embrace the Jewish right to self-determination in the land, known as Zionism, when Palestinians finally accept that Zionism is the legitimate expression of the Jewish right to self-determination in the land, and that they want their state next to Israel rather than instead of Israel, the day that they will stop claiming a non-existent right of return into the state of Israel, the day they will acknowledge that they are no longer into the fifth generation refugees from a state in which they never lived, the day that they finally embrace that their cause of preventing a Jewish state has been defeated and that they can have a constructive life like the Japanese, like the Germans, they can have a constructive life to build a state next to Israel rather than instead of Israel. When that day happens, when the Palestinians do that, they can have their state 
And then that state can engage with the sovereign state of the Jewish people in any kind of agreements that they wish. They're more than welcome to do so, but the prior conditions are for Palestinians to embrace Zionism, to embrace the equal right of the Jewish people to self-determination in the land with all the implications, no invented right of return, no perpetual refugee status, pursuing a state for themselves next to Israel rather than instead of Israel. Then we can have the simulation. All right. Um, does anyone else have any questions regarding uh, the, uh, the legislation before us? I have a quick question to Inat. Uh, is no, 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 no. We, we, we will have it later. No, she raised it again and again. There is no point in any discussion, Joseph, unless uh, at least we understand something. So my question is very short. Do you accept uh, the right of the Palestinians to live, first of all, and B, to, for self-determination, as you call it? Do you accept that one? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? Okay, um, let's take a vote. Palestinian parliament members, could you please vote on this legislation? Do you support um, the declaration to in, in grant the veto power? Okay, publish the vote. Share the results. 11 out of 11, so we have fluctuating numbers, but still more than 55%. So 100% of those who voted, voted yes. Let's have the Israeli parliament members please vote. Okay, publish the vote. 14 out of 15 um, are willing to give a veto power to both governments. Uh, so it passed both the Israeli and the Palestinian parliament members. Congratulations, this legislation has passed. Let's go to the next uh, legislation. And um, it's, uh, can I have, uh, Libby, could you please read this legislation? We are the parliament members of the federal government. Could you Israel. read the, the headline too? Oh, sure, sorry. Make peace with Gaza, Iran, Lebanon, and Syria. We are the parliament members of the federal government of Israel, Palestine. We are the only legitimate government in the region. Our people have experienced wars and violence for over a hundred years. The Israeli and Palestinian governments have failed to bring peace to the people of Israel, Palestine. Therefore, we are taking the initiative to protect all the people in Israel, Palestine and provide them with peace. To achieve this, we are forming our own delegations to directly meet with the authorities in Israel, Gaza, Lebanon, Syria, Iran, and other countries. Our intention is to demand that all these governments and entities agree to cease violence and threats against each other and work towards a lasting peace. Our goal is to be fair and objective and to expose any governments or entities that pose a threat to our people. Okay, Dr. Wilf, do you have any comments regarding this uh, proposed legislation? It hasn't passed yet. Yes, it has to be exactly the other way around. First, the Arab world has to recognize the Jewish right to self-determination in any part of the land. Then there will be peace and all that. So it's not everything you're doing is reversed. You're reversing cause and effect. You're reversing the order. The first thing that needs to happen is for the Arab world to first let go of decades of useless anti-Zionism. Anti-Zionism has been the crutch that the Arab world has used for decades to turn away the anger of its population from its dysfunction. The anti-Zionism of the Arab world is what led, you know, they always said it's not about the Jews 
And yet somehow, wherever anti-Zionism rises, the environment turns hostile to Jews and no Jews are left. And the only thing that separates the ethnic cleansing of Jews from Europe in the 1930s that became a genocide after in the 1938 Evian Convention, there was supposed to be a Jewish state, but Arab violence forced the British and there was no Jewish state in the 1930s so that the Jews could come to that state that was already being prepared for them. The only thing that makes the difference between the genocide of Jews in Europe in the 30s and the fact that Jews in the Arab world only suffered ethnic cleansing in the 1950s is the very existence of the state of Israel. Because this time the Jews had somewhere to go, unlike in the 1930s, where no one wanted to take the Jews. So it is first the Arab world that will have to let go of its decades of anti-Zionism, reverse course, accept the Jews and Zionism as the indigenous legitimate expression of the Jewish people. And that is what will bring peace, not your fairy idea. So if the Arab world does not accept Zionism, we are going to be in a state of war until that time? Because that's the cause of war. The cause of war has always been one, the Arab denial and complete rejection of the Jewish right to self-determination in any part of the land. This has always been the singular cause of the conflict. It has never been about what Israel does, or what about the Jewish people do? It was about what Israel is, that Israel is the expression of the Jewish continuity, of Jewish self-determination in this land. This is the cause of the war. And if you read what the Arabs said in the 1930s and 40s, to their credit, they made it very clear at the time, just like we're seeing now, the Hamas atrocities, uh, they um, kind of, they sent it to the world. They wanted everyone to know. And then when they realized that it's not necessarily being accepted as much as they thought it would be appreciated, they're trying to erase it. But if you go to the core, Arabs in the 1930s, 40s made it very clear that they do not accept the right of the Jewish people to self-determination in any part of the land. Let me remind you, there was an I, partition was not just about partition, it was also confederation. And the Arabs rejected it, made it clear that any part of the land having Jewish sovereignty is unacceptable. This is the cause of the conflict. It's never been about what Israel did. It was always about what Israel is. And that's why this is the thing that has to change if we are ever to have peace. All right, does anyone else have any comments, uh, any questions regarding this particular legislation in front of us? Okay, um, questions, Asma, please. Yes, yes, hi, uh, I just want to understand, is it about a uh, federation uh, Palestinian Israeli or Arab Israeli? It's a it's a federal government for the people of Israel and Palestine, from the river to the sea in Gaza, the West Bank, and Israel. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Having no questions, please have the Palestinian Parliament members please vote on this legislation. Publish the vote, 12 out of 12 Palestinian parliament members who voted in this, 100% uh, voted in favor of this legislation. Let's go to the Israeli parliament members. Please vote, Israeli. I don't see, uh, I don't see the, the vote for some reason. I, I think I erased it by error. Um, Israeli parliament members, uh, please publish the vote. Could someone tell me what, okay, here it is. All right, I see it. Um, 
12 out of 14, 86% of the Israeli parliament members voted in favor of this legislation. So uh, congratulations. Let's go to the next legislation. And that is a the legislation regarding jurisdiction solution. So this is um, uh, the solution that we are proposing instead of the two-state solution. Uh, Libby, would you be so kind as to read out this uh, uh, jurisdiction solution? Uh, let's see if I can. I can't see all the words on my screen. Uh, okay. I can right, read then. it. Okay, Charles, go ahead. Jurisdiction solution. The two state solution has been attempted multiple times, but it has resulted in significant violence and less peace between Israelis and Palestinians. It has also failed to achieve its intended goal. The IPC does not oppose the two state solution or any agreements between the Israeli and Palestinian governments. It recognizes their need for self-determination. The IPC, which is elected through general elections and allows all Israelis and Palestinians from the river to the sea to vote, is the only legitimate government in Israel-Palestine. We acknowledge the Israeli government's right to pass and enforce laws that affect individuals and land under its control. We also acknowledge the Palestinian government's right to pass and enforce laws that affect individuals and land under its control. If the IPC laws contradict the respective Israeli or Palestinian laws, preference is given to the respective Israeli or Palestinian laws. If the Israeli and Palestinian laws contradict each other, the IPC will pass its own laws in accordance with its constitution. So let me just a um, brief explanation. In the event that the, let's say the Israeli government passes law and says, Jerusalem is under the jurisdiction of, um, of um, Israel. And the Palestinian pass legislation and say, East Jerusalem is under the jurisdiction of the Palestinian government then there is a contradiction in law between uh, the Palestinian and the Israeli laws with regarding to East Jerusalem. We will therefore, the common government will pass legislation in accordance with the legislation, giving uh, require in according with the constitution, I'm sorry, giving both the Israeli and the Palestinian uh, uh, parliament members uh, the right to vote, 55% on each side, and giving the Israeli and the Palestinian problem, uh, governments a veto power. This will enable passing legislation that both sides will find, will have, will find it acceptable. So the, uh, uh, Dr. Wilf, do you have any comments regarding this legislation? Uh, okay. Seriously, it's, uh, it's almost seven o'clock. Um, I've been beyond patient. Uh, I think uh, I'd be happy to just move to the conversation at this point. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have a question regarding this legislation? Hearing no question, let's take a vote. Palestinian parliament members, please vote. Do you agree with the legislation, Par Palestinian parliament member? As soon as we're done with this vote, we will go to um, the question and answers for you, uh, Dr. Welf. Okay, 100, uh, 14 out of 14, 100% of the Palestinian parliament members voted in favor of this legislation. Let's go to the Israeli parliament members. Um, do you support this legislation? Okay, I published a vote. 93% of the Israeli parliament members voted in favor of this legislation. So congratulations, we have a legislation regarding jurisdiction that um, will help a lot in in replacing or if necessary the two-state solution so 
I'm going to accommodate you, Dr. Wolf, and um, open the discussion to have the audience um, uh, ask. So if you want to ask Dr. Wolf questions, uh, please raise your electronic hand and um, we'll take a vote. Uh, we, uh, I mean, we'll start questions. Uh, Charles, uh, and then John, and then Don. Um, let's start with uh, Charles. Uh, Dr. Wolf. Um, I, according to my understanding, um, the PLO wanted a secular state for 100% of its inhabitants. They were pushed into accepting a two-state solution. And the Oslo Accords um, were never sufficiently acti acti activated because uh, settlements into the West Bank never ceased. So I understand that anyone who has an identity that they cling to, that they feel is of greater import than their human identity is going to be in conflict. And I'm asking you, how do you perceive that the, the proposal that you put forward that basically everyone just surrender and accept defeat. Um, I, I would say that uh, New Zealand, um, Switzerland, Belgium, those are cases where people received a political accommodation with each other without violence. So it's not impossible as you seem to suggest. Okay, there's a lot to discuss here, so I'll take it in, uh, in order. First of all, if we look at the entire uh, 20th century, it could pretty simply be discussed as the transition from uh, imperial control to nation states. That has been the political transition of the 20th century based on the principle of self-determination for peoples. When uh, peoples were lucky, they were able to self-determine and their borders matched some sense of the people. When they were unlucky, the borders were determined by the receding imperial powers, typically descending into civil war and a dictatorship and sometimes both. The principle of self-determination is the principle that at the moment governs the political organization of the landmass of this earth. This is the principle that is at the core of Zionism, that the Jewish people are a people, and like any people, they have the equal right to self-determination in the only land in which they were ever a people, in which as a people they were ever connected, and with the fall of the Ottoman Empire, a lot of people were recognized in their right to self-determination, the Arabs, the Jews, the Armenians, the Kurds, um, and given various developments, the Kurds did what they did, I'm sorry, the Turks did what they did to the Kurds and the Armenians, and their self-determination didn't exactly happen. The Arabs tried to do the same with Jewish self-determination. The Jews managed to survive the onslaught and to have their own state. But the principle of self-determination for peoples is the principle that governs our global political organization. If we wish to have a different principle and the, thing, the other nations that you mentioned, we only look at the last few years, but they went through numerous, numerous wars and violence until they finally accepted those organizations and mostly uh, when you have, as I said, in Europe, we look at the EU, a great example. The only way that the EU was able to emerge is when Germany accepted unconditional surrender, was occupied, uh, the allies wrote its constitution and ultimately it went through denazification through an entire process of changing the ideology. What we have here, and again, it's, heavily documented, it's just that we tend to have short memories. The Arabs made it clear at every moment for the last century that they denied the Jewish people's right to self-determination in the land. The PLO established in 1964, if you look at the maps 
of the Palestine Liberation Organization from 1964, they include only Israel in 1967. So they don't, this idea of a secular state for all its inhabitants was developed later to appeal to Westerners, but those are ideas that ultimately have one strand that connects them. The idea that the Jews as a people will not exercise their right to self-determination in any part of the land. The Palestine that the PLO wanted to liberate was the Palestine where the Jews were sovereign. That's what they cared about. When the Jordanians annexed the West Bank or the Japanese or the Egyptians militarily occupied the Gaza Strip, the PLO did not ask to liberate those areas or to build a secular state there. It only sought to liberate the part that was Israel. Now, you are completely right that when the negotiations over Oslo, there was not a moment then either that the PLO accepted the two-state solution. Because when the PLO said we accept two states, they continued to claim that they have a non-existent, it does not exist, but they believe they do. It continued to claim that the Palestinians possess uniquely among all the nations that were established in the wake of World War II when empires receded, new borders were established, populations fled, uh, hundreds of millions became refugees, that the Palestinians uniquely among those peoples possess a right, no less, to return, that is to settle inside the state of Israel, and that is in breach of Israeli sovereignty. That is how they perceive that right, as non-negotiable, as individual, as in perpetuity. So when Palestinians throughout the Oslo years claimed that they are supporting a two-state solution, and almost nobody bothered to ask them about the right of return or the refugee. People assumed that it was an issue to be resolved in negotiations. The assumption was that when they have an opportunity to have their own state, the Western projection was that the Palestinians want self-determination. That no one could really fathom that what they want is first and foremost for the Jews not to have self-determination, that that is the bigger priority. So nobody took the right of return seriously. But then when the time came to sign to have their own state in the West Bank of Gaza, capital in East Jerusalem, no settlements, all the things we are told are at the heart of the conflict, both Arafat and Abu Mazen walked away to no criticism by their people, followed by massive waves of butchery and violence, not from Hamas, from Fatah, uh, because that's not what they wanted. They did not want to trade away this idea of return in order to have their own state and part of the land. When they had to make the choice, they walked away from anything that would not give them from the river to the sea and would ensure that the Jews do not have a sovereign state anywhere. So in truth, and in your question, even though I'm sure you didn't mean it, that's what you highlighted, nowhere in the last century was there ever a single moment when a Palestinian leader, and I would even say a small NGO, truly accepted the idea of Jewish self-determination in any part of the land, in any way, shape or form and this has always been the cause of the conflict so so well, let me ask you a question um uh doc <clears throat> basically from what i understand from you is that unless the arab states the arab leaders accept the idea of jewish self-determination there is not going to be peace and I'm asking a question, does it really make sense to put the question of peace in the hands of your <clears throat> enemy? In other words, you basically, by your, by your position, you are saying that Israel has no way of making peace unless someone else makes a move. 
And is that a responsible position? Is that a, a, a good position for the people of Israel themselves, the Jewish people? Let's start, let's start first from having a realistic assessment of the situation. But my favorite quote uh, is a quote by Ernst Bevin, the British foreign minister after World War II. If you know anything about Ernst Bevin, he was no friend to the Jewish people, no friend to Zionism. And yet he needs to explain to the people of Britain, to the British parliament in February of 1947, why Britain is betraying and reneging the mandate that it received from the League of Nations. As I said, the Ottoman Empire is defunct and the League of Nations creates a mandate to help the peoples of the empire achieve self-determination, the Jews among them. This is the mandate to help the Jews achieve self-determination. There are other mandates for the Arabs. They achieve their various states. Uh, and the British, because of Arab violence, the Jewish state was supposed to emerge already in the 1930s. The biggest mistake is that the people think that the Jewish state was established after the Holocaust so that never again. Herzl was a visionary who understood that we needed to build a Jewish state so that never at all. But Arab violence in the 20s and the 30s, there's no settlements, there's no occupation, there's nothing. Arab violence in the 20s and 30s is already directed against Zionism, against the Jewish right to self-determination. As a result of this violence, the British renege on the mandate, close the doors, and the Arabs are not held sufficiently responsible for the fact that their violence combined with British betrayal closed the doors to the Jewish people, to their embryonic state at their hardest hour when they could have still fled. So this was the cause. Now, Bevin in February of 1947 needs to explain why Britain is throwing back the mandate that it received unan unanimously from the League of Nations. It's throwing it back to the United Nations, the air. And he says the following, he says his majesty's government has come to the conclusion that the conflict in the land is irreconcilable. Again, no settlements, no occupation, all the things, no refugees. I mean, there's no Israel yet. And already he calls the conflict irreconcilable. Why? Because he says in the land, there are two peoples, groups, Jews and Arabs. The previous question asked about the idea of humans. I love the idea, I love the idea that we all live in a John Lennon world where there's no borders. It's just that when the Jews are asked to go first, they get a little suspicious. So Bevan says, we realize His Majesty's government has come to the conclusion that the conflict in the land is irreconcilable. Why? He says, the two groups in the land, the Jews and the Arabs, each have a top priority, a singular goal, something that they care about more than other, calls it the point of principle. <laughs> he says the Jews want a land, quite simple, the Jews want a land, uh, uh, the Jews want a state. So the Jews want sovereignty in the land, they want a state. He says the Arabs, as a top priority, the Arabs in the land, those that are later known as the Palestinians, he says the Arabs of the land want the Jews not to have a state in any part of the land. Listen to the definition of the conflict. The Jews want a state, the Arabs want the Jews not to have a state. By definition, this is irreconcilable and this has been the core of the conflict ever since. This is why Jews accept partition because it realizes their top priority of having a state, even though it's half of what they were promised. This is why Arabs reject partition with violence because it, it, set, it fails to fulfill their goal of no Jewish state in any part of the land. So yes, if we are to have peace, one of two things will happen. Either you accept the Arab vision of peace in which there is no Jewish state and that's what they've been working for for a century, or you accept the Jewish vision of peace in which the Arab world finally lets us be, finally lets us have our sovereign state. So yes, there is a vision of peace where Israel disappears. That's exactly what the Arabs have been wanting for a century. But yes, you're saying, given that the price of peace is Jewish self-immolation, then 
excuse me for saying that, yeah, that is the one thing that we will not do. The Jews will remain self-determined until the Arab world finally accepts that the Jews are not, as they invented in their minds, some white European foreign colonialist crusaders, we're hearing that a lot from uh, Hamas as well, that came to a land to which they have no connection, when there is an acceptance that the Jews are indigenous to this land, that Zionism is the legitimate expression of their ancient connection, that yeah, is so what will happen. Let's, go, let's go to our next right. question. And uh, John, John, please ask your question. Yeah. yeah, Doctor, I think your responses are far too long, which effectively restricts the amount of questions which are going to be asked. But before I ask my question, uh, I want to say uh, in response to a point that you made uh, with regard to uh, Palestine in the 1920s, when you said there was no settlements, there was no this and there wasn't that. May I remind you that when the Zionists bought land in the Jezreel Valley, they evicted 9,000 Palestinian tenants from the land. So please don't ignore the uh, reality of the Zionist invasion of Palestine in the 20s. Now, my question is this. You said that if the, if the uh, Palestine and the P PA recognize the state of Israel, uh, you said that uh, Israel would uh, legitimize and create a Palestinian state. Now, can you tell me, please, uh, can you give me a, a, a geographical answer? What area would you or would uh, Israel give to the Palestine, Palestinians as a state? Okay, so first to, to your first comment, one of uh, my favorite maps, and you're welcome to also look at this article, it looks at the eradication of malaria in the 1920s and 30s. Uh, the Jews bought lands that were malaria infested lands and made them prosperous by eradicating malaria. If you look at the incidence of malaria in the land and you look at the partition map, it is almost one-to-one. -one. The land that was ultimately assigned to the Jewish state by the United Nations was the land that the Jews basically took from malaria. Now, what you are describing are processes that happened across the Middle East, processes of changes in land and urbanization. But what I love is what you're saying, the Zionist invasion of the 1920s is that you are exactly reflecting what I'm saying is that the conflict started long ago, but people are trying to talk about now settlements in 67. And it went to the notion that indeed the Zionists were somehow invaders rather than indigenous people who have a historical connection to the land and who have done everything above and beyond to really reclaim and create a prosperous land. Palestinians, Arabs in the land could have had their state multiple times next to a Jewish state, but their top priority has always been not to have a Jewish state. Now, again, I speak very precisely. You said that I said that Palestinians or the PA did not recognize Israel. I didn't say that. I said that there has not yet been a recognition by any Palestinian leader or even NGO, that the Jewish people as a people have the equal right to self-determination in their historic homeland. This we have never ever heard, including of course, what it means that there is no right of return into the sovereign state of Israel. I am fully in favor and have written about it and continue to support the Palestinian right to self-determination in the land, the West Bank and Gaza, capital in East Jerusalem, written a lot in support of partitioning Jerusalem, West Bank and Gaza to the Palestinians. I do believe, based on the principle of self-determination, is that at the end of the day, the two peoples in the land, the Jews and the Arabs, would benefit greatly 
from living in two separate independent political entities where they can fully express themselves. But as long as the Palestinians have made their superior cause, their singular mission to first make sure that the Jewish people have no state and only so that, then everything else, then we're stuck. Every time cool. that they were offered the opportunity to have their own state, but th that meant, and this continues to be the price, that the price of having an Arab Palestinian state is that the Jews will also have their state. What geographical state. They have Indiana, always Dr. walked away and typically proceeded to be very violent. All right, let's what go to Don. What, what, is, what, what is this propaganda lady saying? The Palestinians, the Palestinians, the Palestinians from 1947 until now, I'm speaking. from 1947 I'm until now, they never hey, been given I'm, a state. I'm Let, let's, go, let's go to Don I'm, Raphael. This well, is I a propaganda. This is why, why we will never reach peace with people like this. Never. Okay, let's go to Don Raphael. Okay. Don. Okay. Uh, I'm speaking from an American Jewish perspective. And Dr. Wolf, I have to say your, your statements are quite uh, depressing to me. And um, you state that you recognize equal rights for Palestinians to self-determination in the land. I'm not hearing that in your comments. And yes, we can go back history does pivot in my view. I don't pretend to have the knowledge that you have of Israel and Palestine, but I think the history in the last 15 to 20 years, particularly in the last five to 10 years, particularly in the last one to two years is very different. And I find it contradictory and hypocritical. And we have to move aside the current, the horrific current events of this past week where there are war crimes being committed by both parties, potentially now with the Israeli invasion of Gaza, that you state the Palestinians never recognized equal rights of the Jewish people to self-determination. I do not see in any shape or form where the Israeli government has recognized the Palestinian right to self-determination in the land over the last year, five years, 10 years, 15 years. And you're lumping together the Arab people, the Palestinian people and Hamas all into one neat little package and I think Oslo, I'm not an expert like you claim to be, but it's a lot more complicated, the failure of Oslo, than you're, uh, you know, stating and giving your history of. So I'd like to get your response to that. But I have to say, perspectives that you give give me very little hope. And I'm a peace activist. I work with m multiple organizations. But when I hear rhetoric like this, it uh, doesn't give me much hope. Thank you. So I will uh, explain that in order to achieve peace, and I have recently been reading uh, Tim Bovary's excellent book on British appeasement of Hitler. And it is depressing to read how deep and wide was the desire to not see what Nazism was. And I understand after World War II, and this is a book that you read with horror to see all the people who really made every effort to believe that Hitler had limited goals, that he only wanted to undo the Versailles Treaty or to get back to Saarland or to bring together all ethnic Germans under his control. And there was a refusal to see. And there were a lot of peace activists at the time, appeasers, and at the time appeasement was um, actually a positive word. And they did not see the Nazi regime for what it was until it was too late. And you are now living through a week where we have seen exactly what the Palestinian ethos has led to. The effort to say that Hamas does not represent the Palestinian ethos is a comforting delusion. If there are elections held tomorrow in the West Bank, Hamas is elected. Hamas represents the idea that the Jewish people have no right to self-determination. Hamas will be elected of because land. all of this money you've been sending for the past two years. Do the terrorist they Jewish settlers in the airport. West Bank represent Hamas the will be people? elected because you allowed all this money to come and help I Hamas for the past uh, years from the Qatari government. That's why Hamas will be, be, will be winning. Hamas will win because for the past 30 years, 
the PL open, open, and open hands to be to make peace with Israel, and you guys make us look like idiots and losers. Stop lying with this propaganda. Side, wait, wait. Let let's let's wait, please. Okay, so Somebody I've uh... who's, who's, who's trying to avoid the whole living of Palestinians. We've been living there since four thousand years, from nineteen forty-seven until now. Give me why I don't have a Palestinian state before Hamas, before anybody else. Why the you reason... are supporting Hamas? Why are you sending money from Qatar to Hamas every year, every month? Your government allowed the money for the past two years to go to Hamas, miss. That's the lies. Okay. The PA for the past ten years been been asking for peace. What you been giving us? Can I, I just want to finish? It's like a shame to call to, to, to speak about peace with 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 the, with the state of Israel. I love that. I, I want to finish one comment. I mean, with the act At this point, I've lost of, out the train. So of the Israeli up? government and the Jewish settlers in the past year, the evacuation of Palestinians from their land, the displacement, the violence. This past week, there were 51 Palestinians killed in the West Bank by Jewish settlers or the IDF. How do you not recognize that? And does that embody the entire Jewish people? I mean, you're, you're, you're taking the Hamas as a terrorist organization and um, you can't lump the parties together. There'll never be peace if the leadership of both don't take accountability, but you're not recognizing that the activity of the Jewish government in the past year and years has given no self-determination to the power. How do you not recognize that? I like to ask questions here on top of that. Why the Benjamin Netanyahu government allowed hundreds of millions of dollars million. to support Hamas in the past two years? And they brought Excuse the money me. through Ben Airport. Money. I did not remove my raising my hand. I was number one. And I, I'm trying to be respectful for the rules, but I was not uh, my. Uh, OK, let, let me let me call the order. It's Don. Uh, I still haven't finished answering the other one, but uh, up to you. I'm, uh, okay, I will answer briefly uh, to questions. all those questions. Okay. I, I was and, not I, yeah. I was let, let me just call the order so people feel that they, they're they going to be asking. Don Rafael is going to finish his question if he has Shlomo or Arbel, Abed, Adina, Zohar, Yanovich. Samir Twer, Sean Zar, Asma Sinochi, <clears throat> and Saeed Aziz. And I'm done. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm here too. I'm Arbel. Okay, okay. okay sure so we'll let's go. Let's go to Shlomo now. Shlomo Or. Shlomo Or. Oh, just, but please, just one second. I was first, and somebody removed okay. my hand. And what's I was your name? I'm sorry. I, oh, Abid. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, go ahead, ask your question, and then Shlomo. I have a question <clears throat> to the host, uh, not the host, the guest. And my question is uh, you said that the Jews have the right for self determination. Does the same rule apply for Muslims and Christians? And if not, why not, please? Your question betrays one of the biggest misunderstandings, sometimes willful, sometimes just by um, mistake, of what the Jewish people are. I am not a religious person at all. The Jewish people are first and foremost a people, a nation. So you do not think of Jew like Christian or Jew like Muslim. The idea that the Jews are a religion is a 19th century invention, uh, mostly in Europe and the West, intended to fit the Jews into the era of emancipation. So the idea was to create the idea of the Jewish religion as separate from belonging to the French or the German nation. But the <laughs> Jews are first and foremost a people, a nation, I would argue that in many ways they have given the world the very imagery and stories going back to Exodus of what it means to be a people and a nation. Okay. The question of what we moderns call religion is one that some Jews uh, uh, 
follow certain rules, others don't, but the broadest group is the nation and the people. So when Herzl wrote the Jewish state, the Judenstadt, he did not think of the Jewish state, Jewish like Christian or Jewish like Muslim. He thought Jewish like French, Jewish like German. So Zionism is based on the idea that the Jews are first and foremost a people and a nation. Given that they are a people and a nation, they have the equal right like all peoples of nation, like Arabs, like French, like Germans, the right to self-determination. And that right is to be exercised in the land to which they are connected, in which they were always a people. So your I, comparison is very instructive, but it shows the misunderstanding that the Jews are first and foremost a people I, and a nation. I have a follow up on your statement. You are trying to have a unique case that of a mix of religion and nationality, but nationality usually comes from a group, let's say it's a Semitic. The Ashkenazi Jews are not Semitic. I don't know even understand how they became Jews when they were in the Khazar kingdom north of the Caspian Sea. And Herzl himself from there. And so on one hand, you, you know, you are making tailoring the rules according to what you want the things to be. So if you want to be a uh, democracy for Jews, so it has to be as a religion, it has to be for all, uh, you, you know, the other religions. And if you want to have it for a race, then, then let's go to an national and make rules for the national, like the Arabs and the English and, and so on and so forth. But I see the things are tailored to fit. And it is a clear, the one who drove the idea of are the Ashkenazi Jews, and I know what suffering they have been through. From the czars of Russia, who drove them and enslaved them, brought them to current place, Ukraine, to the oppression in Europe. <clears throat> and then the oppressors of the Jews, the victims of the oppression, they came to people sitting don't have power to defend themselves and doing exactly what they have been done to them. The world right now- Abed, what is your question? We, we need to move forward. We have a lot of people- The question is a clear. Can she clarify the contradiction and the selectiveness of that criteria they tailor to fit what is a Jew, what is a Israel, you know, and that is, that's what I would like to have an answer. So there we have it. The, again, at the core of the conflict is the complete and utter denial that the Jews are a people. And this is why I was very specific in my words about the Arab denial of that the Jews as a people have the right to self-determination. And we've heard all these conspiracies, the Khazars, the religion, the Jews are a people. Let me remind that again, the idea of self-determination is that the people self-determination and that the people self-determine and the Jews have a very clear sense of being a people and a nation. And I am well aware of all the efforts to deny that, but the Jews themselves have always been very clear about being a people and a nation. And let me say something about the idea of national self-determination. Zionism is normal. It's anti-Zionism that is bordering on the obsessive. Zionism as a movement to self-determination, all the world's nations, when they were lucky to self-determine, they have a certain unity of history, language, religion, even when they're secular, there is no question what is the background religion, let's say as in Norway, uh, so language, people, ethnicity, the, pe the Jewish people are an ethnos, there are sub-ethnicities, but there are ethnos in terms of being a family, being connected. So all self-determined nations have a clear sense of what the nation and the people are. Now they can be democracies with national minorities as you have in Israel. Israel is not unique in having a clear national majority, a democracy with a national minority. When countries were not lucky to self-determine and their borders were determined by 
receding empires that threw several groups together and told them now you're a state, like let's say in Iraq, what you had then is basically devolving either to dictatorships or to civil war or together. But the Jews are first and foremost a nation. And as long as Arabs continue to try to prevent and deny the Jews from self-determining as a people and a nation, we go back to the core of the conflict. Uh, I, I Okay, can, can we have all, everybody asking the question? Because the answer is going to be one same. So why don't we have everybody put the questions and then let people in the audience know? Because to right, me, but, Israel yeah. is a fairy tale as well, based on the Bible and on the, on the 3,000 years to claim to the land. So can we have all the <laughs> questions? And, because the answer will be the same. Okay, all right, so... Um, Essentially, my concern, right, according to my source at the intercept.com, um, the, the, the PLO was ideally a, a secularist organization, right? Um, they might have been, they might have had leaning ideas, but idealist, idealistically speaking, the PLO um, back in, in the uh, 50s was a, a secularist organization. Uh, for some reason, um, Israel found it to be advantageous to um, go to an Islamist group of people um, and and uh, give them the ability to to essentially combat the the PLO against the proper advice of Cohen at the time. Um, I'm just going to read an excerpt from my source real quick, so I can what, just get what, to my question. How is this related, really, to the, all of this issue? Come on, uh, just, uh, and it is my turn, not yours. All right, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, first of all, first of all, Judaism is a religion. There is no Jewish nation, I'm sorry, that's, I am a Jew and, and there is no Jewish nation. There is a Jew, Jewish religion. Most of the Jews don't live in Israel. Many of them don't recognize Israel, don't, don't, uh, don't are not Zionist. And many of them object, 75% of the Jews in the United States object what the Israeli government is doing. So, so let us put things in perspective. You are hiding be behind all of this um, <clears throat> uh, recognition of, uh, of uh, self-determination. You, you said it a thousand times, and you said it another thousand times. This self-recognition is, is not relevant. What is relevant is you have two people. You have, you have people who are majority Jews, yes, and you have the people who are majority who are, who are Palestinians, and we need to solve this problem of living together and all of this play with words of you want them to to lie down and to let you step on them. I, I understand, but no, we are two people with dignity and with with right to to live to live in peace, and that's what is ITC is about: is how do we live together, and not how how do how do we not you know, always negative. So please, uh, let's focus on living together in peace and leave all of this nonsense of, of, uh, of recognition of the... How many times is, uh, is uh, the Palestinians have recognized Israel? So many times. There were the Oslo Accord, there were other accords. Always there is a mutual recognition about the needs, about the fact that we two nations want to live somehow together side by side or not. And that's the problem. And don't don't escape to any 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 kind of uh, demagogy. Uh, the fact that uh, you don't want to hear what I have to say doesn't uh, negate that. But when uh, the book "The War of Return" came out, uh, how uh, Western indulgence of the Palestinian dream has obstructed the path to peace. Uh, one of the things I was most proud of in the book, written with the Adi Schwartz, is that they gave the Palestinians the respect of taking them at their world, at their word, throughout their history, and really seeing how that history clearly developed. And again, to the credit of Palestinians, they have been consistent over the last century about the rejection. And yes, I will repeat it because it is at the core of the conflict that the Jews as a people have any right to self-determination as a people in their own state in any part of the land. And they have been very consistent. Uh, one Palestinian scholar who 
reviewed the book. Of course, he was not happy about our recommendation that indeed the Palestinians need to understand that they're not refugees, that there's no right of return. But in terms of our analysis, he never, uh, he basically, he said, duh. I mean, it took Israeli researchers several years to realize what Palestinians have been saying for a century. Now, again, as to the Jewish people, you may decide that you take yourself out of the Jewish people, but again, read history. The notion that there is Judaism as a religion emerges clearly from uh, the French Revolution and the beginning of emancipation when you have the creation of states and the Jews who up until now were clearly outside European Christian society are invited, emancipated to become French or German. And the price of that is for the Jews to deny the fact that they are a nation so that they can become French and German. And this is the invention of the moment of Judaism as a religion separate from the notion of belonging to a people and a nation. And that breaks apart the package that was Jewish life basically for centuries. Now, this creates still a way, and you're right, a lot of Jews have continued to live according to this notion of separating the national identity from the notion of faith and ritual, which we call religion, but the idea that the Jews are a people remains remarkably powerful. Please I answer know, the question. Uh, and we don't I'll, want to hear lectures. Why do you keep uh, going on? Just this answer is, the this question. This is the biggest the scam theory. You the biggest scam set... theory I ever hear, man. This is unacceptable. This lady does not know what's the difference between Judaism and Zionism, and she don't want to. I don't know if you want to follow Moses' law or Herzl's law. So just. Just, just keep the scam of Jewish state away from us. If you want to live with us as, as a human, we will live as a human with equal right in our, in our ancestor land. And for you to start giving all these excuses that you belong there and you don't belong there, we need the thousands of uh, sessions to prove who's there and who was not there before. So if we're going to come here today to speak about rights for self-determination of the Jews, you don't even know what Jewish is. This state does not even have borders, does not have constitution, does not know there is a law just applied to certain people and the majority of people are not go by the Torah and the, by the Jewish law. So you going around this with your philosophy does not make sense. It's either we live together equally. I am Palestinian. I've been, I, I am 50, 52 years old. It's been two years before I came to America and, and prison. Until now, as an American citizen, when I go to my country, I don't feel like I'm a human. Whatever you're gonna come and tell me about your history and about your Judaism, about your suffering in Europe, that does not mean nothing to me because you are acting the same thing and worse against us today. So let's move forward and look at each other as a humans and stop this grab about your history, about you, because I don't give a damn about Muslim or Jewish or Christians. I care about the humanity. If we're gonna talk this way, we can reach an agreement. If not, we are wasting our time. I, I have a quick question. Uh, just a quick question. Do you, what do you think um, quickly about what, what Israel is doing in the West Bank, the treatment of the Palestinians, um, yeah, self-determination. No. How how do you what how is your view of, about how Israel is treating the Palestinians, the ethnic cleansing, the genocide? How how do what do you think about it? There's no gen again the words that are being so cheap. There's no genocide. There's no ethnic cleansing. I want Israel to be out of the West Bank because I want the Jewish people to live in a clear state of their own with a clear majority. And I don't support any, I will support a disengagement from Gaza. So, I want to get out of the West Bank. My family, my family originally from Haifa. L listen, ma'am, listen, West Bank is not Palestine. I have the right in Haifa as equal as every Zionist Hazar Jewish to have the right in Haifa. So you know what? Start to understand 
politics from Brother Joseph so you understand why we all here and listening to him. Haifa is my town too. Haifa has Palestinian That's Arab too, so, correct? So why you want Palestinian to be in West Bank and Gaza? Who give you that right? Why I don't have the right to be in Haifa tonight? So I rest my case again. Uh, this is a fascinating thing. Always when I bring it up, I have yet for anyone who's not Jewish, it's typically the Jews who try to uh, explain away, but uh, I, there is a word that I invented in the book in the War of Return, which I called West Plaining. Um, a lot of Jews, some have done it here too. West Plaining is like mansplaining is the Western desire to explain away what Palestinians have just said. If you'll notice, the Palestinians on this call have made it very clear, Palestine is from the river to the sea. The Jews are not a people. There's no Jewish right Where to- Where is your border? Can you stop right there? Where is your border as Israel? Can you stop right there? What's your border as Israel? Tell me what is the border of Israel. The sovereign territory of Israel today includes Israel, in the way that it was in the pre 1960s. So my town, so my town in West Bank, my town in West Bank, consider what? Next to, to Ofra and Orbit Il. Is it, is it Israel or Palestine? Israel. The West Bank is not part of Israel. It's not part of the sovereign territory of Israel. So, so, so a, city, a city could call Israel and next city could call Palestine, in your opinion, correct? So, so, so we could go to Yafa right now. And because Yafa or Kfar Qasim is Palestinian, we could call this Palestine, correct? The sovereign territory, right now, Haifa and Jaffa are in the sovereign territory of the state of Israel. I'm not and sure. Ofra, it, and Ofra too, Ofra too, Beit Il too, correct? No, they're not in the sovereign territory of the state of That's Israel. That's a big lie, ma'am. Excuse me, you are lying. You're straight lying in our faces. <laughs> Ofra is under Israel's sovereignty. And you know that, Shlomo and Ofra. It's and actually Obisa. not. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, it there. is. It is. They're not because part when of you the drive, territory when you drive to of Israel. To, when you drive to Ofra today, you will go to a private road and you will have special treatment and security nobody else have. So it is, it is state of Israel. You didn't even have that a There's no you Israeli even... control there, but you asked me if it's part of the sovereign state of Israel and it's not part of the sovereign state of Israel. Make it's it, let's say, quite let's say it's very the way clear. it is. You don't have a border. Where is your border? I'm asking you again. Where is the border of Israel? <clears throat> she said it's so uh, for borders, in order to have borders, and that's actually a, a wonderful discussion, borders require the agreement of two sides to the border that this is a border. So when Israel is established in 1948, 49, Israel doesn't have any borders. And you know why? Because none of Israel's Arab neighbors were willing to make peace with it. Basically, they were only willing to sign armistice, ceasefire agreements, because the message of all Arab countries, Egypt, Jordan, um, Syria, Lebanon, was that yes, they may have failed to achieve their goal in 1948 for the Jews not to have a state, hence the war against partition, against the establishment of the Jewish state, but they're not willing to say that the war is over. They're not willing to make peace and establish borders with Israel. And therefore, they only signed ceasefire agreements. So as a result, Israel is born without any borders because none of its neighbors are willing to actually you're Make missing the point completely, man, because if you ever made peace with Palestinians not going to Saudi Arabia, you will have peace long time ago. Because you are trying to make peace with Arabs who have nothing to do with Palestine. If you want to do peace and care about peace and care about your future, you make peace with the Palestinians first, not with the Emiratis or with the Moroccans or with the Saudi. You see Israel where 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 you where you where, where is the allusion? Where is the where is the, the, the Deception I of agree. your mind. Israel has repeatedly you are making, offered you are, you, Palestinians you are, you are, you are the opportunity a, a to have with a Jordan, state not with the, the Palestinians. Okay, fine. No. No. I, I can't believe it. There is a completely different aspect. Say, I would say, like give her, to give, name. Give her, give yeah, her a chance. There is a completely different aspect I would like to name. I think the Palestinians have the power to make peace right now, anytime. All they have to do 
and they also claim their Palestinian state from they Israel. Don't they, don't they, don't they don't even call us Palestinians, my friend. They don't even call us Palestinians. Let me, let me talk before you listen, before you uh, reply. The only condition is the Palestinians have to fulfill a big wish of the Jews when they came to Israel because they wanted to rebuild the, uh, the state of Israel of biblical times. Once the Palestinians now, today, would say yes to this wish, would welcome the Israelis. The Israelis would be obliged by their biblical rule of an eye for an eye to pre be presented with their Palestinian state. And from then on, there would be peace between Israel and Palestine. This so so, 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 so let, me, let me ask you a question, Mr. Hunter. So uh, wait, wait. Uh, an Argentinian, no, no, no. We, we Argentinian need to, Jewish guy to have some order here. Citizenship Say. in my country. Okay, let's go to um, our bell. Uh, one, okay. one, one, I have one, 10 one, minutes one, left. Our one bell, let's go to our bell. One small comment to uh, Sahad, with all due respect to you, sir. Uh, a healthy element of communication is listening. Uh, you want to okay. be heard. Let, 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 let's, go, let's go to Practice our what you our uh, We've been is. listening to you for 75 years. Wait, wait. You want to be heard. Do not conduct this conversation. Let's go to our bell. If you want to be heard, you have to listen to what they are not interrupting. You keep on interrupting other people. You don't listen. You have to listen and avoid. You just confirm my point. You don't listen. I want to be like this. Listen, listen, listen. So other people can listen to you if you listen. Arbel Medina, can you ask your question? Yes. Question. Let's make these questions very short. Very short. Because our sure, guests sure. also. I only have nine time. minutes left, so I'll take it's what right. I can. Our bell, let's go. Okay, all right. So, um, in, in, uh, Inad, is that how you say, say your name? Inad? Mm -hmm. uh, doctor, you're a doctor, I presume? Doctor. Not a medical one, but yes. Okay, so, so uh, Dr. Wilf, right? Um, how do you ensure with, um, because historically speaking, you, you guys have not done a very good job. Um, how do you ensure that Israel will secure peace and not support or give credence to um, organizations that have proven to be extremely harmful to the Palestinians up until this day, according to um, according to General um, Yitzhak and um, is Islamic and, 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 and religious uh, leader, uh, Cohen. The Palestinians are agents of history. They are perfectly capable of choosing leaders and parties and organizations that will reflect what they want. We, I know there is a deep, especially Western desire to believe that Fatah, when it uh, massacred the Israeli athletes in 1972 in the Munich Olympics, uh, somehow did not represent the Palestinian ethos or that Hamas doesn't. And there is a separation. The Palestinian ethos has been singular and consistent to, about the denial of the right of the Jewish people to self-determination in any part of the land. Israel, at the end of the day, is not the body that determines who leads the Palestinians. If the Palestinians truly want to pursue a constructive cause, a state for themselves in the West Bank and Gaza, next to the Jewish state of Israel, rather than instead of it, they are more than welcome to put in charge the leaders who will do that. 
you know, believe me, I know, and maybe I'll end with that. When I make those claims, I know that a lot of people, there's something that rebels. It can't be, there must be other voices. And I always tell them, look, it is very easy to disprove me. Bring me Palestinians, not West Plainers, not Jews who tell me what Palestinians think. Bring me Palestinians who in their own voice, publicly, whether in a tweet or in a declaration or a meme or an op-ed say, we recognize the equal right of the Jewish people to self-determination in the land. We understand that the Jews as a people are not foreigners in this land, that they have a history here. We understand that the path to peace means having an Arab Palestinian state next to the Jewish state of Israel. And we understand that the implication is that we are not refugees and we do not possess a right of return into the sovereign territory of the state of Israel. I always tell them, if you think that there are other voices, then bring them, show them. Don't tell me that they exist, show it. And delegation after delegation, group after group, doesn't come back. They come back with various things anywhere from, and we've heard some of it today, the Jews are Khazars, the Jews are a religion, they're not a people, there's no connection to the land, let's just all live in peace and be humans and not recognize that there's any difference between people, it's okay for 199 countries to have that, but not for the Jews. I mean, people come with a variety of responses that all amount to one thing, non-recognition that the Jews as a people have the right to self-determination in the land. So all I'm saying, you are really peace activists. You really want peace. Look reality in the eye. Listen to what is being said. Look at the core of the conflict and don't project Western ideas. Listen to what people are saying, find out if there is really a voice, because at the end of the day, the reason I was willing to come here today, whether it's a confederation, a federation, two states, one state, those are details. Those are not important elements. They're really completely unimportant. How the Jews and Arabs of this land will organize their lives between the river and the sea, the details of that are unimportant because the same conditions that will make a confederation work are exactly the same conditions that will make two states work. For both of them, you need the Arab Palestinian recognition of the equal uh, right of the know. Jewish people to self-determination. Once that is recognized, the two peoples can equally decide how they want to organize their lives there. But if you don't have that recognition, moving from a two-state idea to a one-state idea will merely change the name of the conflict from the Israeli-Palestinian conflict to the Jewish-Arab civil war. But you're not solving the fundamental issue. Is there a willingness to embrace the Jewish people as a people, as sovereign, and even part of the territory to recognize that this is their ancestral land and to realize that that means the Jews will not have all of the land between the river of the sea, but neither will the Palestinians. Both sides need to recognize the equal claim of the other to self-determination. I recognize it, it was asked of me, I recognize it fully. Israel has recognized it multiple times. The Jews have accepted partition. The Jews have offered Palestinians multiple opportunities to have their own state. This is and the by biggest the way, lie ever, man. Let's, you let's, 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 go, no, 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 let, no. let's give uh, Zohar, no. Zohar, Zohar. Uh, okay. No, I, I'm just finishing well, this one just, sentence. This I'm gentleman. really, uh, no, I have to don't go. go. I have one minute and I have to go. Okay, let's you go to The reason, uh, all you I want to say, is, sorry. Let me just finish and I'm gone. This was my Go last question. 
one. Uh, the reason that the Jews have always accepted all proposals at partition to states is that because we're good or nice or moral at the end of the day, I don't think this is the issue here. The Jews are deeply cognizant of being a tiny, tiny, tiny ethnic, national, linguistic, and also for some religious minority in an overwhelming Arab and Islamic region. To the credit of the Arabs and the Muslims, their seventh century conquests of the region were very successful. And as long as the Jews care about Arab or Muslim, you live in Ukraine, Morocco. Uh, let me just, I promise this, uh, as long as the Jewish people care about being sovereign and free in this land, we know that we are destined to be a minority in an Arab and Muslim world that is a hundred times our size. And, we, and this is why we are always willing to compromise, not because anyone is better or nicer here. This is not about that. It's because we're small. And because we're small, we understand that, as the, that we're willing to compromise and we will always do. And the reason that this has not led yet to the establishment of a Palestinian state is that every proposal at partition was rejected if it meant that the Jewish people anywhere in any borders between the river and the sea will still have their state. You Look, never have this has been long. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. I really appreciate have to you coming go. over. And oh, thank, uh, you. thank you so much. Please, please tell the doctor to right. listen to the recording so that she can know how much she was repeating. All right. Thank you so much, doctor. You can and send him a send that You out. have our uh, thank you and uh, permission to leave if you choose. But um, we're going to continue. Let's have Zohar ask the question. If I'm sorry she, if she's not here, but uh, I try to get all of you. But uh, the the questions and the answers were very very long. Zohar, go ahead. Joseph and uh, good evening, everyone. It's a uh, terrible times that we are meeting in right now. Uh, my heart go goes out to every Jewish and Israeli that might have suffered a loss, as well as a Palestinian that is currently has family in Gaza or in the West Bank that is going through a brutal retaliation Israeli forces. Um, yeah, it's it's a shame we have people like Inat Vilf, I don't know what to say. If anything, I want to thank her. Uh, it was her performance a few years back during a debate on Intelligence Squared claiming that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism that brought me into the world of activism towards Palestine. And I started seeing that Israeli officials are going after Jewish professors like Ilan Pape or Noam Chomsky or everyone just about that uh, proposes the idea of a, a Jewish ethno state on the land of Palestine is considered to be anti-Semite. Uh, I was wondering about her dispute of the idea that the Fourth Geneva Convention, uh, black and white states that there is a right of return for refugees in times of conflict, together with other type of uh, uh, international agreements. I wanted to ask her about the fact that Jewish people from Europe are getting the right of return and passports and compensation for stuff that they might and property that they have lost in the Holocaust. I wanted to ask her about the multiple times in which uh, Israel has made Israeli officials made statements that there's never going to be a Palestinian state, whether it's uh, Bennett or Smotrich or even uh, lately, Benjamin Netanyahu said that the Palestinians are going to have something not as much like a state, but a territory somewhere like a reservation. Again, um, I'm from my record of following Inat Vilf's doctor, Inat Vilf's work. She is a Hasbara propagandist working hand in hand with the Israeli authorities and spreading the same type of bullet points saying that there are no Palestinian people and they have no rights. Thank you all for participating and God may bring peace on all of us. Thank you, Zohar. Yeah. Let's go to um, Samir. You need to unmute. Samir, you need to unmute. Yeah, all right. Hi, everybody. Hi. Yes, after uh, listening to uh, Inat and 
talking about the history of Zionism and Herzl and whatever. Well, in my opinion, those early Zionists were very stupid when they thought that Palestine in the early 1900, it is like America in 1492. I mean, all of their thinking was totally wrong that they thought they can do what, how America started, they can do it, the same thing in Palestine. And that's totally wrong, proved to be wrong later on. And also- No, they did, coming, they, that's, that's not true. They didn't want to do what America, America wanted the, the, the first, they wanted to create a secular country. The Zionists wanted to create a Jewish state. Well, regardless, I mean, but the idea of thinking about taking out, wiping out the whole population, Palestinian population, and started a Jewish state, that's the wrong concept. That's what it is. I mean, thinking about Palestine had more than 1 million population in 1948. And here, I mean, they come and they wanted to start a state and they go and kill and massacre Palestinians and then and, and displace more than 750 Palestinians. They can expel them out of their land to establish their state. So that's the wrong concept. I mean, uh, but regardless, they did what they did. They committed the Nakba to the Palestinians in 1948, and they kept doing what they are doing until 1967. And in 1967, by, by that time, I mean, they already established what's called, even those artificial state of Israel, but they call it Israel, Israel proper. Okay, in, 1940, in 1967, they started the war, the aggression against the three Arab countries, Egypt and Syria and Jordan. And they ended up with taking Sinai and the Golan Heights from Syria, and then taking the East Jerusalem and the West Bank and Gaza. Okay, you get that. Now you have, I mean, if, if those Israelis at that time, 1967, I believe that God the Mayor and Moshe Dayan and all that, and the Labour Party, if they really smart, they just didn't need to do, I mean, they have two solutions, either to copy what they did already since 1948, to include all Palestinians, annex the West Bank and Gaza and East Jerusalem, and make all Palestinians citizens of the new state and equal, and give them equal, equal rights. And that will be the end of the story. But they didn't do that. The other solution is there were two United Nations resolutions, 242 and 338. If they applied that at that time, if they adhere to that, that will be the end of the story. So I mean, two solutions they missed. They did not incorporate what they occupied to make it one democratic state, one secular democratic state, they missed that. And they did not adhere to the uh, UN resolution to solve the conflict. Instead, I mean, they continue the conflict, continue the war, and then in 1973, there was a war. And then after that, they also, they didn't learn from that until, Sadat, President Sadat of Egypt, initiated the, his visit to Jerusalem in 1978. And then after that, they had the Camp David Accord and they, with the help of the, with Jimmy Carter administration and they uh, achieved peace with Egypt. Okay, after that, I mean, if also those Israeli were smart enough, build up on that, I mean, continue what, already done in Camp David and do it with the Palestinians. No, 
They did not do that. Instead, I mean, in 1982, they invaded Lebanon and they killed more than 100,000 Lebanese and, and Palestinians. It just devastated the whole area. And then we go all the way until 1987 when the first intifada started. And it lasted many years. And then the Gulf War in 1991. And then after the Gulf War, there was the Madrid UN under the UN umbrella. They wanted to bring all parties. That means Arabs, the, the, the Israelis, Palestinians, and the Arab countries. Plus, I mean, at that time, Soviet Union, Russia, and New Russia, and then that was in 1992. And they had been going very well at that time. In the state, and, and who comes on the side? The Labour Party. The Labour Party, what they did, they went behind the Madrid. Samir, Samir you need to keep it short because we are. All right. All okay, I, I'm coming. Yeah. And after that, I mean, just to show, I mean, because we'll just come to we your had, conclusion and then we. All right. We can, the conclusion that, I mean, all of these missed opportunities, that what, I mean, you blame it on, on, on Israel, I mean. Well, the bottom not, line is they don't want peace. That's what you want to say, and I agree well, with you. Well, they, it's not they don't want peace, I mean. They they did not do it correctly, I mean. They uh, did it. They don't want peace. Uh, all right, let's No, go. no, 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 no. It's not they don't want peace. No, I just want to clarify that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, instead of I mean continuing the path toward peace, what happened in the Madrid conference, they mm -hmm. went behind and cooked with Yasser Arafat the Oslo Agreement, and later it came about. And the reason that why I mean the Oslo Agreement failed later on, because it did not have. The UN, I mean, the UN to guarantee that. I mean, they, they did that thinking that, okay, we'll do this uh, deal with Arafat and we'll end up the story. And it didn't because, I mean, it was so weak. So it failed and by the first uh, assassination of Rabin, and that was the end of it. And, uh. and, and now, I mean, thinking about what did the Israeli achieve? What did the Israelis achieve since 1967, for 56 oh, years of Please occupation, stop. they received Relancing. nothing. They achieved nothing but hatred and revenge by all Palestinians, by all Arabs, by all Muslims <laughs> around the world. Oh, all right, let's, go, let's go to Asma. Hey. That, that's it. I mean, okay. Please, stop, they missed stop, the chance. Stop, stop. They missed the chance. All right, let's go to us. And you blame it on them. I blame it on Israel, not on the Palestinians, not okay. on the Arabs. Let's go to Israel Asma. Uh, Asma. Asma. Yes. Uh, do you hear me? Yeah, Asma. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, Dr. Wilf, she was talking more about Arabs, including Arabs, but uh, with all my respect, uh, uh, who died recently are not Arabs, are Palestinians and Israeli. Uh, so I don't think that uh, Arabs opinion uh, matters here. And if we're gonna include Arabs, let's say that um, in theory, Arabs, uh, they don't recognize uh, um, Jews self-determination de and uh, this is in theory, okay? And in, in theory, they want uh, Israel to disappear, in theory. In the practice now, what we see, there is a normalization between many Arab countries and Israel, which means this is just, um, when talking about Arabs wanting Israel to disappear, just coming from a place of fear, uh, it's, it's not true. Because in practice, what we see is the opposite. We have an embassy in Egypt and Morocco. 
Um, also, uh, talking about the solution of two states, saying that it was rejected in the past. First, we're not living in the past, we're living in the present time. And in the past, the context of the two station was different. The context today is different. And also, there is a difference between uh, uh, um, requiring a recognition of Zionism and recognition of Jews as individuals. There is a difference. It's like recognition of political party. Uh, and we're talking about Jews. So we must uh, just make the difference what exactly she wants or people like her, what they want exactly. And um, also, uh, I wish if she was more focused about Palestinian Israeli and not Arabs. Um, and if uh, Palestinians uh, will recognize Israeli for self-determination and Palestinians will do the same. So the idea of IPC is possible. And also, um, if Palestinians uh, want to go back to their cities, the, the original cities, the idea of IPC would be the best option because living in confederations uh, means people can travel and there would be peace. So also if IPC will, um, like uh, in practice we have an IPC, uh, the Arabs uh, will see this as, as an example. So it, uh, it, there, is, there is nothing risky for Israeli, there is nothing risky for Jews. If we're gonna say that Islam, for example, is dangerous, extremist, extremist dangerous in Islam or in any other, uh, any extremist in other ideology, it's, it's, uh, it's dangerous. But if we're gonna talk from this perspective that Jews are the, the Muslims, they don't, they hate Jews. Uh, Pakistan is a Muslim country. They have a nuclear weapon. So uh, what they are waiting for to eliminate Jews, they don't do it because it's so simple as it is. In theory, people can hate, can say, talk, but in practice, people, they don't do anything. And uh, in practice, people, they are looking for one thing, it, which is um, financial and uh, business interests. It's, it's going before any ideology. So the idea of IPC would be very, very great. And we must, me, me originally, I'm Jews, so we mustn't see that the risk is coming from others and uh, based on this idea of fear, they're gonna kill us, they're gonna and do every action overreacting through this. Besides, Jews can be also aggressive to uh, like among their communities. We can see the conflict between radical Jews and the other Jews. So, What's the danger really? Is it uh, um, giving the, like uh, or voting, for example, for a government who's not willing for peace and willing for more violence because violence will lead to more violence. The violence, if it was an answer, we would have peace like a long time ago, but it's, it's, an, it's, eternal, um, it's an eternal conflict. So, uh, we need to be aware that we shouldn't feed the violence because the violence will lead to uh, um, extremists and it's, it's not the solution. So yes, we, unfortunately not all Palestinians will be able to go back uh, to their homes. Unfortunately, no Jews will feel safe to come to Israel. But if we're willing for peace, everyone here has to do a, a compromise. It's very, very difficult. But as a not neutral person, I say that we, we have to do compromise. We don't like it. But if it's going for the goal of the peace, uh, the idea of IPC is really great, really great. All right, thank you. All right, let's go to Saeed. Uh, compromise, my uh, my friend, uh, Asma, uh, uh, does not come when you have so much blood in the street. Uh, I want to make two points, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. One, Abbas, Abbas been opening his hand for the best to say from Oslo agreement. We have two. 
We have two, we have two Palestinian governments. One wants peace in Ramallah, one wants war in Gaza. And you see today for the past 30 years, no Palestinian, I guarantee you guys, put this on me. No Palestinian will ever believe in peace because nobody ever see the Abbas government ever get anything. Number two, and instead of destroying- Could you explain that? I didn't understand your point number one. Point number one, you have two governments. One government recognize Israel, what we call the Sulta and PLO from Oslo agreement, and they've been negotiating peace and they got zero until now. For the past 30 years, they have zero. On the other hand, you have Hamas, where two months ago, $50 million a month was allowed from Qatar to come to support Hamas via Ben Gurion airport. And all of a sudden Hamas invade or whatever they did last Saturday. Now we are in Qayas. What I'm saying is you will never find Palestinian believe in peace, including me today. I'm totally against everything called peace because for the past 30 years, we've been trying to make peace with uh, the uh, Israeli uh, government. And every time the Israeli government goes to, to right wing, they go more right and more right. So my point is, for the past 75 years, you will never see somebody like Abbas and the PLO governments today in Ramallah, but they got zero. But in the same way, Hamas is funded for the past two years from Qatar via Ben Gurion Airport. So the person who should be responsible for what happened today in Gaza for last week, last week is Benjamin Netanyahu and Ben Gafir and Smatridge. So for us to come and talk about peace, I think this is this is out of the out of the place right now. This is getting worse and worse every day. Civilian getting killed. How are you gonna make? How are you gonna compromise with somebody when we have 50, 50 family was waved out of the human history in Gaza? You could fight Hamas as much you want, but what civilians have to do with it? Why are we killing civilians? Why are we destroying houses? Why are we allowed the money to come from Qatar and all of a sudden you was uh, tricked by Hamas and now you are? destroying people and human life. So I'm telling you, Saudi Arabia peace is not going to bring anything. Qatar peace is not going to bring anything. United Arab peace is not going to bring anything. Egypt peace is not going to bring anything until the Jewish people recognize the peace has to be done with the Palestinians, with your neighbors in the West Bank and in Haifa and Yaffa and Jerusalem. There is, will never be peace for your nation ever. Now you're creating hate, you built in hate. These kids, these, these soldiers who invade uh, the borders or uh, attack the borders last week, 20 years ago, they saw blood in their front of them. And now the same thing happening. The cycle of violence gonna keep going back and going back. You need to elect more liberal people in your government because now we are, we are getting with fascist government. Ben Gavir and Smartridge is fascist. And when you want to call this genocide, it is genocide. When you move in over 700,000 people out of their houses, there is genocide. This is uh, uh, cleansing. So please, before we start talking about your history, about your suffering, you need to recognize our suffering today. We're not animals, but I am 52 years. And until now, I feel like I'm an animal. I have 14 years old daughter right now. She is the most peaceful thing you ever seen. I don't know how to teach her hate. I don't know how. We blame it in, in, in right wing criminals like Ben Gafir and like all these people. I am against killing, against anybody, against civilian killing. But when you come and tell the world, there is 40 people been butchered and it turns to be a lie. And now you come going back to Gaza and butchering people left or right. How are you going to expect my kids to make peace with your kids? All right, Said, let's go to Godfrey. Thank you.
And I'm sorry about being emotional, but you know what? For, we are, for the we are week, two and a half hours. Joseph, for the past week, we've been not sleeping. It's, we are suffering emotionally. Enough. Okay. All right, let's go to Gottfried. If, guys, can you keep your comments a little shorter? Because yes. we're two and okay. a half hours into this. Of course. You know, the reality is Israel is there and the Palestinians are there. Correct. Both have the right to live in peace. Correct. But how can they have peace? I think the Palestinians have the power to make peace instantly. All they have to do is fulfill the deepest wish of the Jews when they came to Israel to welcome them uh, when they came to Israel back a hundred years ago, something oh. like that. To yeah, welcome but, them. But the Jews but they wanted can, to create uh, a one. Uh, let me, let me, I'm, I'm not taking long. I'll be finished in a minute. Uh, the, the Palestinians have the power to welcome them. And the, in that instant, the Israelis have the, uh, 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 they are obliged to present them with something of equal value to this value uh, for this welcome. And the only thing of, Israel, of equal value is the Palestinian state. As soon as the uh, Palestinians welcome the, uh, the Jews in Palestine, the Israelis have the obligation to prov provide them with their Palestinian state, West Bank, and so on. And that will make peace instantly, instantly. This is all I want to say. All right, Charles, let's go. Charles. Can you hear me? Yeah. OK. Um, well, it, to me, it's, it, it's pretty simple. The contradiction that you know she expressed was that she you know, said that we have the right to self-determination, Me, we meaning the Jews, and uh, we have to oppress other people because they refuse to give us that right of self-determination that says nothing about their right of self-determination or the fact that the two states that she contemplates it's gonna solve this problem is an area where they've moved 500,000 Jews forcefully into the area, basically eliminating any possibility of making two states and proceeding with that political policy with the support of the right-wing government currently. And the idea that, that uh, this, this uh, thing that's happening now, um, I don't know, I, I kind of view it as 9-11, like uh, for, in my opinion, Bush knew it was gonna happen. He didn't know how bad it was gonna be or anything like that, but he knew there might be an attack and that that would allow him to do all kinds of stuff. I mean, that's my own little conspiracy, but there's a lot of scuttlebutt out there that, you know, the, the, they were told by Egypt, they were told by various, the CIA that uh, something was being planned and they chose not to react. And this is their reaction now I'm just repeating what Todd Pierce wrote in the chat in the New York Times. The state of Israel has no choice but to turn Gaza into a place that it's temporarily or permanently impossible to live in. Creating a severe humanitarian crisis in Gaza is a necessary means to achieve the goal. Gaza will become a place where no human being can exist. We are fighting human animals. And we are acting accordingly. There will be no electricity or water. If you wanted hell, you will get hell. And I also heard that um, Smolens or somebody said something to the effect that, um, well, 2017, he said, you know, Palestinians will be given three options. They can either leave, they can accept submission, or they can die. So where's the right to self-determination in that? I don't see any way out except for people to start understanding that their humanity has to exceed their identity. And that is the path that I believe the IPC offers. Thank you. Let's go to um, Israel Aharoni. Israel, you won. Thank you. I have three short points and I'll say it in a point form. Point number one, when the discussion about the solution turns into history, the discussion is derailed. <laughs> Two, when Dr. Wolf talks about nationality, etc., 
she's a little bit dishonest because no Israeli government so far will agree to divide Jerusalem or share Jerusalem. And three, the Palestinians have the right to self-determination without any condition placed by Israel because no condition were placed on Egypt or Jordan to sign a peace agreement. Netanyahu invented this idea of recognition to derail the idea of a national, national state for the Palestinians. And fourth, in the same vein, in the same vein, we must stop the two sides from thinking that the solution is a military one. Correct, correct. And not a political one. Correct. And the fifth point is the solution will be imposed from outside, not from inside. Um, I wanted to make a short comment too. You know, I speak with Israelis and Palestinians and I see a very, very common objection. And the common objection is that both the Israelis and the Palestinians tell me there is not going to be peace until A, B, and C happen. Both the Palestinians and the Israelis tell me that. We saw that today with Dr. Wolf. She said, until they recognize the Jews, until... To me, not only it's not logical, because what if you truly want peace, you do not want to create, to put yourself in a position where someone else decides when to remove the conditions. If you truly want peace, you say, I am going to do whatever I it whatever it is it takes to make peace, regardless of whether the other side removes conditions. Exactly. So that's one thing, it doesn't make sense. Exactly. But in reality, they really don't want peace. They just want to create artificial conditions that they know the other side will never accept. And if the other side will never accept, then there's not gonna be peace. What the IPC does is it removes these artificial obstacles. It basically says, if you want peace, we don't want any conditions. Let's come in and talk as human being. And if you noticed, she was saying these, these are, I forgot the words that she was using, but she's saying this is an imaginary reality. She's refusing to accept an imaginary reality. She wants to have to go back to her reality, to the reality that prevents peace day in and day out. These people, in my opinion, do not want peace. They want to continue the conflict. So let me, that brings me to the, to the. Just a second. I, I agree with you 100%, by the way. Um, yeah. Uh, what I want to say, something that I'm, I'm sorry, I had to leave for a second. Yeah, um, let me just have the concluding remarks and then. Can I speak also? Yeah, in the meantime, go ahead. Can I speak? I'm sure. Yeah. Has... yeah. No, I, I just wanted to say that I'm I'm a justice friendly pacifist and I believe that we have to have justice. But my question is, is Israel a fairy tale also? Because the whole story is based on the three thousand year old claim to the land as well as it's based on the Bible. So isn't Israel also a fairy tale if if <laughs> because uh, we are being claimed that we are, uh, but every solution or proposed solution has to start from fairy tale or whatever you want to call it. But I think to, to deny that Israel is a fairy tale, and then you say that only five generations ago they became refugees, therefore they're not. But then 300,000 years, 3,000 years, as more or many, many, many generations. 
and Israelis are also dual citizens, many of them. So it's a question of where Palestinians cannot be dual citizens. And the point is that where she also claimed that uh, the invaders in Japan had to agree with the Japanese, a lot of issues. So does she acknowledge that the Zionists are the invaders who have to get the Palestinians sign a peace treaty? Because she drew a, also example of malaria infested land. So if I buy malaria infested land in Canada, can I put an Israeli flag there? Because uh, I, I don't know why she brought yeah, Malaria. But... All right, look, I, I'm not here to refute what she's saying. The question we we can we can argue this forever. If you brought her, she will talk for forever about whatever your question is. But let's go to the closing remark. A common democratic federal government can bring peace. It's the only way to bring peace. Online election is feasible and can help security. One day of war, we just saw one day of war, like the first day of war, probably over two, three hundred million dollars in one day. What is wrong in, with creating a common government? If you truly want peace, if you truly want security for the Jewish people, for the Palestinian people, let's spend three days of war to create it. And see if it, it if it what's wrong with having a legitimate common government for the people of Israel and Palestine? There's nothing wrong with that if you truly want peace. So I hope you join our next simulation. Um Shlomo, you want to say one word? That's fine. Go ahead. Um, right, yeah, please, please, uh, Joseph, we love you. And please send her a copy so that she can listen to her answers. Because yeah, no, we, I am sending the yeah, we're sending the the, the recording to everyone. No, I oh, wanted okay. to how uh, how we get how we get this live, uh, Joseph? How we watch it again? I'll send you a recording. I'm sending recording every time. Okay. Yes, yeah. I, I very quickly. If you don't get the recording. Let me know. Oh, I'll send it to you. So can I'll teach the way. Uh, sorry. sorry, Olivia, one sec. It's throughout it's history, uh, I don't know of any peace agreement where one side demanded from the other side to recognize self-determination, and it's 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 like uh, beyond ridiculous. And also, it, it, it reminds but me these like, These okay. are artificial conditions, yeah. okay? It's just yeah. like saying, you know, you need to recognize that you can come up with artificial conditions that don't that that you know the other side is not, and and by the way the the Palestinians did agree to them Yasser yeah. Arafat agreed to them it, and, and the the goalpost is constantly moving it's not objective criteria yeah. and what we are offering is objective criteria yeah and she argued all the time that the Palestinians never want peace never it is exactly the opposite. It is the Israel that never wanted really peace. Israel no, wanted no. the land and wanted it without people. And, no, and no, 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 no. Israel, also, Israel also. want peace. Israel doesn't want to pay the price. And also Israel doesn't want to give up. That's not wanting peace. If you don't want to pay the price. No, no, yes. I know, I know. I'm just saying it because they, are, they don't want to give up even one inch of the West Bank. Yeah. It's a declared policy of the Netanyahu government. Yeah, of all the governments. Mm -hmm. and, uh, all right. Thank you. And you're, so and you're absolutely right, Joseph. They will invent.